You may be seated. Man, I'm excited to be in church today. Oh, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. You guys ready for a, a summer surge? Oh, a summer surge. I like the sound of that. Anybody remember the, um, um, if you were like a 90s kid, if you remember um, that, that drink, that soda? Oh, man. Surge, watch out. Watch out. I think it's illegal now. Um, or maybe, maybe somebody's hoarded it and you, can, uh, and you can find it like on eBay or something. Maybe we should order some for like baptism Sunday and, and see what happens. That would be some baptisms. People flying out of the water. Man. That would be a good day in church, a good day in church. I'm excited about this summer. I'm excited about this surge um, that the Lord put on Pastor Jeremy and Sarah's heart. I'm excited what we're gonna see. I'm excited what we're gonna do. I'm excited the depths, the deeper places in God we're gonna go, what we're gonna see from him and in him together as a family. And uh, I'm excited to do it with you together. Amen. Today, I want to keep talking about this summer surge that we're in. Where am I going to put my phone here? Let's see. I don't need that. Uh, we're going to keep talking. About, wait, before I say, before we get into it, can we just talk about this Toyota Corolla for a second? <laughs> I mean, I, I would just have to argue 300,000 miles, just getting started. You know what I'm saying? I got, I got a newfound love for Toyotas and and kind of how they were built. And that was funny, uh, you were talking about the car seat, Jay, how the seat didn't really fit in there today because today when we came to church, um, two weeks ago, no, three weeks ago, we had another little baby boy in our family. <laughs> Give it up, his name is Silas, he is so cute, cutest thing I've ever seen, he looks just like me. Um, he's awesome, he's awesome, but this is his second week in church. And uh, we all came to church together in our car and I put in the part of the car seat, um, you, you know, like you can normally just put the car seat in and then put the seat belt over, or you can put in that base part and then put the car seat in it, which that makes it so much bigger and longer. So it, he was behind Courtney. So we had Silas in the back seat, and then Titus was in the middle in his car seat. And then we had Ezra over here, three boys. Thank you, Lord. What is going on in my house? This is crazy. <laughs> But Silas's like car seat was so big that Courtney was like pushed up like you were talking about, Jay. And so I'm sitting back and I keep looking over here and she's like almost in the windshield. And we're driving to church and there's people looking at us. Courtney's just smiling like. So, I mean, it wasn't a Corolla, but I know what you're talking about. I know what you're talking about. No, but we have so much to be thankful for in our family. We are so, so blessed to have a little baby Silas, little Silas bear in our house. He is a joy and he is awesome. Okay, cool. Let's get into the word today. And today I wanna to keep talking about this surge, this summer surge, this surge of power. And the title of my message today is, is this, the pathway to power. We've been talking about this summer surge, a surge of power, but what is the power? And where can we find the power? The surge is the manifested presence of the living God. This summer surge, and we've experienced it, but I believe a deeper way, a greater way, a new way in this church, something that maybe we've never seen before. I know we've probably all have experienced his presence and his power, but man, don't you know there's just depths to God? There's more, there's always somewhere deeper to go, deep calls to deep. We've never arrived all the way there, but we're going somewhere this summer. So the power is the surge. The manifested power of God is the surge. Where will we find this power? Well, I'd say we'd find this power wherever he is, right? If God's there, there's power. If God's present, then you're in his presence. The power of God is in the presence of God. So we're gonna talk about the pathway to his power, the pathway to his presence. 
the pathway to the manifested presence of God. How do we get there? Are we always in it? What's the path? Let me tell you. The pathway to this power, to his presence, is praise. The pathway into his presence is praise. Praise will take us into the presence of God. Let's look at, let's see, where do we want to go first? Let's do this. Let's look at Acts, at Acts chapter 2, verse 26. This is Peter, and he's quoting King David, who we'll read about today some. Peter is qu quoting King David. Acts chapter 2, verse 25. This is the New Living. King David said this about him. I see that the Lord is always with me and I will not be shaken for he is right beside me. No wonder my heart is glad. No wonder my tongue shouts his praise. My body rests in hope for you will not leave my soul among the dead or allow the Holy One to rot in the grave. You have shown me the way of life. Other, trans other translations say you have shown me the pathway of life, and you will fill me with your presence. Let's look in the Old Testament. You know, in the Old Testament, when we read um, about how they did it, what stated, a lot of times just a type and shadow of what's to come or, or what it will be. But let's look at the Old Testament and look at where the presence of God was. Actually, we don't have to turn all there. I'll just kind of read this, read this to you really quick. The presence of God was in the Holy of Holies. But as you probably know, you couldn't just go straight in there or else you might croak. <laughs> there was a path. There was a way. And I know there's, you're already thinking scriptures and you know it, but let's just go over it in case anybody doesn't. Um, you can read in Ezekiel, Ezekiel um, chapter 40 and 41, kind of like the layout of the temple, the layout of the tabernacle, where the Holy of Holies was, what was right outside that, then what was right outside that. Um, in Ezekiel 40, it talks about the inner court. It also talks, I'm sorry, it talks about the outer court, also talks about the inner court. And then in 41, you start reading about the Holy of Holies, which is known as the innermost part the deepest part, the innermost part of the temple. It was the place where God's presence dwelled. And when you get in there, in his presence, you worship. But worship may be done in that room, in his presence, at his feet. Woo. But praise is the way to enter that room. They're so closely connected, praise and worship. I mean, we just kind of use them interchangeably, but they're not exactly the same thing. They touch each other. So we say it together and it, and it goes hand in hand with each other. But they are a little different. If that's how it was in the, in the Old Testament, what does the New Testament say about the temple and where the Holy of Holies is and where the innermost part is? Let's read 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 16 through 17. Let me say this first. Have you ever read about all the details of the temple? I mean, I was reading this the other day and I was just like, I, I don't know where we are, but there's, you know, 40 cubits in this. And it was just like, Detail after 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 detail. But the temple was detailed. It was on purpose. It was thought through. In the New Testament, we see this in 1 Corinthians 3.16. Do you not know that you are the temple of God and that the Spirit of God dwells inside you? If anyone defiles the temple of God, God will destroy him for the temple of God is holy. You are holy, which you are. 
When I was reading this, I couldn't help but think about how intricate, let's give us a side note here, okay? How intricate and detailed the temple was back then. How much more has he made us? The temple of the Holy Spirit. How intricate, how detailed, how thoughtful did he make you? Did you know that you were made on purpose? You were made with a purpose. You are the temple of the Holy Spirit and we contain the living God. Man, thank you, Lord. Hebrews chapter 10, verse 19. I'll just read it to you. We're the temple of God and the temple is where his presence resides on the inside. Hebrews 10, 19 says, and so dear brothers and sisters, we can boldly enter heaven's most holy place because of the blood of Jesus. Did you know that you can boldly enter into his presence? You can do it with confidence. You can do it with a surety. You can do it boldly, but you still have to enter. You're not just there. And that's when his presence manifests. So looking at these scriptures in the Old Testament, how do we enter? Has it changed? Do we still enter the same way they did then, now that there's a new temple now? You know, the important thing with God is that he has a way of doing things. And it's so important for us to do it his way, not our way. Man, if we did things our way, we would be jacked up. I mean, my lands, let's not even get into it. Let's just move on. Let's read Psalm, you, everybody knows this verse. Psalm 100, verse four, how do we enter in? Two ways here. Psalm 100, verse four, enter his gates with thanksgiving. Go into his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and bless his name or praise his name. This next one's so good, Psalms 118. 19 through 20 says these gates lead or the way these gates lead to the presence of the Lord and the godly that's us enter there open for me the gates where the righteous will enter and I will go in and thank the Lord entering in requires thanksgiving and praise Without thanksgiving and praise, we're still standing outside. You know, going into this week, meditating on these things, and you know, we've been leading worship here for, the, for how long it holds a church, as long as a church. We've been here since the beginning of the church, and even before that. And I just went into this week praying and seeking the Lord. Lord, do I know what praise is? I feel like if you're gonna lead someone in praise, you should know what it is. You should know what it's not, right? And this is not solely for me and the worship team and all of us up here. This church, in your house, dads, can I just talk to the dads for a second? Dads, are you full of thanksgiving and praise? Moms, are you full of thanksgiving and praise? Here's one way you can know if you're not. If it's not found in your kids. Boop, 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 boop. <laughs> you know, entering in, you have to enter with thanksgiving and praise. If you don't enter in, you're still standing outside. And as a church together, do we desire to enter in into his presence, into worship together? I mean, corporately. You know, it's such a, an important part of the service. And man, I have guilty as charged. I've grown up in, I've been in church my whole life. And um, I've been there at the beginnings. I've been there five minutes late. I've been there an hour late. I've been there, I mean, name it, you know. 
And there's times you just want to show up, but it's like, well, what did you do to enter in? And if everybody else did, well, thank God for his mercy and thank God for his help and thank God for a, just a holy a people that will enter in together. And maybe they'll just grab my hand and get in here, you know, and let's go. But you're either helping press in and enter in or you're holding back. There's really no in between. And I think I've experienced both of those. And obviously he's so merciful and gracious to show up and in his presence, show up and help us. Um, but I think it's important for us to realize that we play a huge part into his presence filling this atmosphere, his presence being manifested in this place. And uh, you know, the songs are not just to like, um, just to pep you up, although a lot of people use that part, and hey, praise God for it. If you need it, come on. You know, hop in here. I'm not there yet. And I'm doing praise the Lord. And the next thing you know, you get there by song three. Maybe your hands are up. By song four, maybe you're kneeling. And then, I, and then you get into the rest of the service, and you're ready. And that's great. But can you come charged up? Like driving in. Thank you, Lord. For, like, I'm gonna give you an example. I don't know when this was, maybe two years ago, a uh, year or two ago. I was getting ready for church one morning and this had kind of been like constant. Like I'd wake up early to get ready for church and I'm, you know, like I know this is gonna be awesome. Like this is so good. But I just felt on the inside, like not into it. I was like, how in the world am I gonna go lead? You know, how am I gonna sing? Like, gosh, Lord, I don't feel it. I don't feel it. And I was walking my dog, Boone out on the back, back part of our property and I was just in my head, solely in my head. I don't know, I don't, I don't feel it. And I was almost, almost getting kind of like anxious about it. And the Lord is like, Jordan, you need to thank me. And I'm like, okay. I was like, thank you for this day, Lord. He's like, you need to thank me for an awesome time and praise, an awesome time. Lord. Thank you, Lord, for an awesome time. And the next thing you know, I can't stop. I'm so excited. I got goosebumps. I'm out there with my dog just, I'm sure my neighbors are probably looking at me like, what is that guy doing up there? I was so excited. And it was like, boop, a, I mean like an immediate flip. Immediate flip, immediate flip. Thanksgiving and praise get you right into his presence. Thank you, Lord. What is praise? Whoop. What is praise? Do you know in the Bible, the word praise is, is translated so many different ways. I say so many, there's like seven-ish. I don't know the exact number. But let me give you what praise is translated as. I won't necessarily say all the words. If I try, forgive me. I don't know how to pronounce them. Here's our, here are some ways that praise is uh, translated in the Bible, okay? I'll say this word, it's yada, which means to hold out the hand give thanks, which is cool because praise and give thanks boop, boop, connected. They're going hand in ha hand together to hold out. Here's some different ways to hold out your hand to give thanks. Here's another one to extend the hands, a sacrifice. Anybody ever heard of a sacrifice of praise, an offering, thanksgiving. Another word means to shout. Another word means on a musical instrument or to sing forth. Another word means to kneel or to bow in thanksgiving. Another word, halal, which we talked about last week, Jeremy, Pastor Jeremy talked about this, means to shine, to celebrate, to be foolish, to make a show. And one of the, I love this, when I, when I read this, I was like laughing so hard. One of the like, smaller words that's connected to the word halal is, this is awesome, is the word pizzazz. Come on. And in my mind, I'm back in Branson, Missouri, where, where I used to live, and there's just like those glittery jackets that they would sing. Anybody ever been to Branson? Mm, anybody ever been to a show in Branson? Anybody ever enjoy the show in, a show in Branson? They're great. They're great, but those shiny jackets and stuff they'll wear, pizzazz. <laughs> no, but pizzazz actually doesn't mean to shine. I just put that in my mind. Pizzazz, uh, <laughs> pizzazz means to spring up, to leap, 
and to be made strong. Did you know you can be made strong while you praise? Come on, somebody. I love this one. I didn't know this one. I didn't know any of these. No, I knew some of them. Let's see if I can say this right. This word is tehila. something like that. <laughs> this word means to sing in the spirit, and it's the praise that God inhabits. Check this out, though. This is cool. It's the same word that is used in Psalm 23, verse 3, that says, He is enthroned upon the praises of his people. This type of praise gives God a seat. How awesome is that to think when we come here on a Sunday morning? Oh, we're ready. This is the day that the Lord has made. Oh, I mean, pizzazz, you know? We might need some pizzazzy shirts. That's not a word. As we do that, man, we can't see it, but just in the atmosphere, atmosphere's changing. Atmosphere, atmosphere's shifting. We're getting out of our head. We're getting into our heart. We're getting out of this natural thing into that spiritual place with him where his presence lives, where his presence resides, the innermost part of who we are coming out from the inside, expressed in the manifestation of his presence. I mean, pizzazz. Isn't it awesome? Our praise creates a seat, a place, a throne for him to come and sit. And when he sits, then we can enter into worship. You know the word worship, a lot of times, we won't get into worship too much, but uh, it's translated to bow before, like at the feet, and to kiss the hands. You know, you can't kiss someone's hand unless you're in their presence. Some of us are trying to kiss the hand, but we're outside. We're not even wanting to come in the gates. We got to get through the gates and get there. We can be right there at his feet, right there in his presence and let him manifest before us. Do we want to experience the fullness of his power, the manifested presence of God in this house, in this church, in your homes, in your life, in your car? We can do it. And the pathway is praise. You know, reading through these, um, I just kept thinking, Lord, it just, it looks to me like praise is an outward expression. But we know that God is not just about this outward showing. That's useless. We sing a song, no flesh will glory in your presence. Flesh. Just that can be flesh. And so I was walking out here praying one day and I was just thinking like, Lord, what, how do you say it? What is it? And maybe there's other ways to say it, but this is the way this week that I kept hearing it in my heart. That praise is an outward expression motivated by an inward devotion. Yeah. Praise is an outward expression motivated, or you could say produced, by an inward devotion. And I kept thinking, don't you mean condition? But the condition of all of us as believers on the inside, imagine the condition of our spirit, deep on the inside, beautiful, perfect. So it's not just about the condition, but it's about the devotion. And devotion means, here's some just things I looked up with what devotion means, allegiance, Loyalty, to give attention to from the inside, to be focused on on the inside, to be dedicated to from the inside, to be affectionate towards, full of love towards the Lord. So 
Praise is not just an outward expression. If it's just that, it's hype. It's empty. There's nothing to it. It's about the heart. God's always about the heart. We know that. Back in 2008, I, I was, was coming out of a first year of college and I moved to California on my own accord. And I did it because I thought it was cool. And I was chasing after some other things in life I wasn't running from God necessarily because I was going to help start a church. I was going to help serve in a church. There was a girl there, da, da, da. I mean, come on. You know what I'm saying? Not the right girl, the wrong girl. So I wasn't necessarily running from him totally, like, but I wasn't running with him. I wanted to be at a distance. And distance is one thing that can keep you from praise, but we'll get into that. So I was there and I knew I wasn't supposed to be there. I just knew it. I remember driving out there. I had this, like a 94 Jeep Cherokee two-wheel drive. Who makes two-wheel drive Jeeps? I mean, come on. I mean, this thing, I, I'm surprised. It, like there had to have been like angels in the engine or something. I don't know. I don't know how it made it. It made it there and back. We'll get to the end of the story later, but um, made it out there. And I was trying to listen to messages on the way out there. And I just remember thinking, man, I'm so, I wouldn't say it, but I'm thinking I'm so dry. I got nothing. I'm forcing this. I'm thinking all this, but I'm thinking like, no, Jordan, come on. Let's go, California. This is your dream. Let's live in California. Get to California it is the worst. I said it was the best to everybody, but it was actually the worst. I mean, first day there, moving into my apartment, I already don't have any money, okay? But I move into my apartment, my car gets towed, I can't pay for rent, da, 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 da. I, get, I get the car back and I pull out and then I get pulled over, not wearing a seatbelt. I'm from Arkansas, I don't gotta wear a seatbelt. You know, like, <laughs> it's just like, it's just not going well, not going well. So what do I do, turn to God? No, I keep going. I just kept going and forcing it and forcing it. You know, that whole summer, this like hurts my heart to say this. That whole summer, I refused to pray in the spirit. I didn't say like, I didn't like say out loud I refuse, but like I would sense that like, come on, Jordan. I'd be like, mm, we can't do that. I think I was like that because I was like, we can't do that because I don't want to find out what to do. I want to do my thing. But as we talked about, you want to do something with God, you got to do it his way. You can't do it your way. So I'm out there. I'm, in a, I'm actually in a great church that's just got its feet off the ground and it's, it's great. And I'm trying to serve. Don't really, can't really get connected. Da, 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 da. What, what do you know? Next thing you know, like I move up to LA. So the original thing didn't pull, didn't go through. I move up to LA. I'm living in LA. And you would think on the outside, Everything was so great. I got a job on, in Beverly Hills at Rodeo Drive working at Ralph Lauren. Like, forgive me, but I lied to get this job. I know, I know. I know. He asked me, I showed up in the, cra you know, you, if you've ever been to Rode Rodeo Drive, like, it's nice. You should have seen what I was wearing in this interview. Not nice. Like, they may have offered me food. Anyways. And he was, at the end of the interview, he was like, hey, that was a great interview, but can I just ask you a question? Like, why are you dressed like that? And I was like, I just moved here and all my nice clothes have been shipped and they haven't made it yet. It took complete, horrible. I'm so sorry. <laughs> he gave me the job, okay? <laughs> so then you could be thinking, well, Lord, I got, this, I got this cool job. I got this great job, da, 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 da. Don't ever mistake the Lord's mercy for his approval. Man, he will help you get back. He will help you. He will help you. He will help you. He will help you. But don't take it as I'm with you and I'm for you and you should do this. 
He's like, Jordan, can you just listen to me, please? Okay, here, here you go. Here, just listen to me. Anyways, I don't want to make this part of the story too long, but I basically refused to enter in or to enter in uh, praying in the spirit, da, 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 whatever. So I moved up to LA. I'm going to another awesome church in LA, a church that you guys probably would hear about that does awesome outreach, um, humanitarian acts. And I'm involved in it. I'm doing it, but I am empty. I got nothing. And it came to the, like three, I've been there for about three months and I'm in service and they were singing a song and I literally was like about to jump out of my skin because I was refusing. I had all the outward stuff, right? But on the inside, man, so dry, so empty, so dead in a sense. I finally sat down and I was like, I'm going to do it. I started praying in the spirit. Long story short, in that moment, the Lord dealt with me you got to get back home. You need to go back. You're supposed to be there, not here. All right. So I moved back, took a, took a little bit, but I got back within like probably a month or so. And there's more to that story. Won't get into it. But my first time back at church where we had been in church in a long time, I remember I, was, I, came, in, I came into church and praise and worship started. And I remember us getting to, I think it was probably a worship song and my arms felt like they had weights on them. My arms would not go up. I was like, I don't want to do that. And it, I was having this inner dialogue. And I was thinking like, I, I can't, my arms won't go up. And then I was thinking, Jordan, this is who you are and all you've done and what, you, what you've done your whole life. What do you mean your arms won't go up? And I was like, I can't, I can't do it. And I just thinking, that's so not you, Jordan. This is ridiculous. This is not, get your hands in the air. And I forced myself to lift my hands. And I'll tell you, as soon as I did, it felt so good. It felt like Barry's back, you know, that's my first name. Barry's back, you know, in his presence, in the thing that he's called me to do. But you know, I couldn't lift my hands outwardly because I didn't have anything going on inwardly. No devotion no love, no focus. My focus was on me. My focus was on my life, on what I wanted to do, on how I wanted to fulfill the call of God. I wanted to go do it that way. Guys, I was living off bean burritos. Like literally, that's it. Not even cheese sometimes, just beans in a tortilla. And man, it tastes so good every time I got it. But living in bean burritos, thank God, got back to a place where I would yield over and enter into his presence. But it took an outward expression of an inward devotion. And if you have a hard time lifting your hands in church, check the inside. It's not, I, I've done it both ways. I've done it where I've all been out here, all hands up, there ain't nothing going on, on the inside. It's still empty. It's gotta come from the heart. God's all about the heart. An inward devotion, an inward affection, an inward love, an inward loyalty, an inward magnifying of who he is. It can't just stay in here. You gotta, gotta get out. You gotta get out. So check yourself. Praise starts inwardly, but it's produced outwardly. Look at these verses, Psalm, 11, Psalm 111, verse 1. 1-1, one, 1-1. One, one, one. Did I say 11? 111. I don't know what I said. It says this, Psalm 111 verse one says, praise the Lord. I will thank the Lord with all my heart as I meet with his godly people. Praise the Lord. Thank him with all your hands. Thank him with all your action. It might show up like that, but it's got to start on the inside. Thank the Lord with all your heart. 
Psalm 100, verse 3, sorry, Psalm 103, verse 1, it says this, let all that I am praise the Lord. With my whole heart, I will praise his name. All that you are. Did you know your three parts? Your spirit, your soul, and your body. All, all that you are. All, all. Just with your body? Soul? Bless the Lord, all my soul, and all that is within me. Praise his holy name. It's all that you are. All that you are. All that we are. I've heard before that people just like, like to stand with their, I'm not even trying to get on anybody's case, but I am. If you like to stand there with your hands, hands I'm praising in my heart. Good. That's the start. Great. But let it produce. Let it go a little further. Not for the sake of being anything in the flesh. Not for the sake of just trying to get people's attention. He'll grab God's attention for sure. That's one of the words. To show. He'll see the show. To celebrate. You know, I was thinking about this. You know, I've got a five-year-old Titus. Go to birthday parties once a day. No, just kidding. <laughs> but it seems like pretty often you go to parties. I don't actually go. I stay home. I don't go. Anyways, but you know, when you go to a party, a birthday party, you go there to celebrate the person. And even probably in your life, when someone celebrates you, what do they do? They do the thing that you like. They do the thing that you want to do. I just want to praise God the way I want to praise God. Well, it ain't your party, it's his party. So let's, let's do it the way he wants. He wants a shout, give him a shout. He wants a dance, give him a dance. He wants to clap, give him the clap. He wants to sing, let's sing. Happy birthday. No. But when you celebrate someone, you do it the way that you do what they want to do. God loves this. This is what he wants to do. He wants to have a party. Have you ever seen, if you got a five-year-old or just a kid at a party, you know, over there and it is like just stinky and there's ice cream everywhere and there's hats and then, you know, your kid's got sweat coming out of their hair and they got red face and you're like, man, we're gonna take like four baths tonight. Like, I don't know what's going on. And then you get over there. It's just, it's wild. Five-year-old birthday parties are crazy. <laughs> crazy. So with our whole heart, with all that we are, not just in spirit, include it. Not just in your soul, include it. Not just in your body, include it. But with all that we are, all that we are, give him praise. Give him praise. Give him praise. Give him praise. So praise will show up in your hands. Praise will show up on your lips. Praise will show up in a shout. Praise will show up on your knees. Praise will show up in open arms. I was thinking this morning about this part. And uh, I was thinking about when I come home from work, what it's like. And man, I just was back there laugh crying thinking about this because it touched my heart so much. Every single time I come home from work, we've got kind of like a split level house. So I come into the garage downstairs and you can hear the door close every time. Go doom. And then all I can hear is this, excuse this mic, Jay. Daddy! And then I can hear the feet upstairs. Dad! And I'm downstairs. I start walking upstairs and I turn the corner and then there they are. Those boys, Titus and Ezra, not Silas yet, you can't walk, but Titus and Ezra, they are arms open up wide. And then before I can get to the top of the stairs, it's like, 
into my loving arms. But what a great example of a father and his kids. Before they even saw my face, before they were even in my presence, before they were even in my arms. Dad! Dad's home! He's here! I can't see him yet, but I know he's here. Hey! I can't see it, but I know he's here. I'm coming! Arms up! Praise you, Lord! And then that leap into my open arms for my kids, how much more his love for us, how much more his embrace towards us, how much, I mean, I'm thinking about right now, I could cry, I mean, my heart is so stirred thinking about, I can just see their little faces here, their little feet, I can hear the noise, the sound of them coming, I can hear the sound of them excited I'm home, I can hear the sound of them expecting I'm home, I can hear the sound of them, we're gonna have some fun, you know? Like, dad's home! How much more? How, can you hear the sound of your feet? The dance? Can you hear the sound of your voice? The shout? Dad! <laughs> I keep doing that. I don't know why. <laughs> it's kind of fun. <laughs> can you hear the sound of your feet? Can you hear the sound of your voice? Turn the corner. Oh, we're getting closer. We're getting closer to that deeper place. Can you see your arms up? Arms open wide. Dad, come on. Such a great example. Thank you, Lord. The heart. God's all about the heart. All about the heart. Let's read Psalm 19 and verse 14. This is so cool. I didn't know this till like a day or two ago, maybe yesterday. Psalm 19, verse 14. Did I say that? It says this. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be pleasing to you, O Lord, my rock and my redeemer. The words of the mouth and the meditation of of your heart. I was looking on uh, somewhere about like what these words mean. This is so cool. The phrase and the meditation means this. It's, a res it's resounding music. The music of the heart. The music of your heart showing up in the words of your mouth the music of our heart. Did you know that your heart has a sound? Yes. Your heart is plotting, plotting. That's, that's what this means to in the meditation. It means to plot a resound, resounding music and plotting. Your heart is plotting. I kept thinking about plants and plotting. My wife loves plants. We've got plants everywhere. Love, our, our house is basically outside, although it's inside. <laughs> But the soil of your heart has a sound. Is the sound tender? Is the sound hard? Can the sound take the seed of the word or does the seed of the word bounce off and sit there? Now thank God for the incorruptible seed of the word of God that has been planted on the inside of us. And if you need to stir it up and get tender, get it stirred up, get tender, let the seed go down and let it produce something in your life. Check this out in Luke 6.45. Jesus said this, Luke 6.45, Jesus said, a good person produces good things from the treasury of a good heart. An evil person produces evil things from the treasury of an evil heart. What you say flows from what's in your heart. What you say flows from what's in your heart. 
In Hebrews 13, verse 15, it says this. Therefore, let us offer through Jesus a continual sacrifice of praise to God, proclaiming our allegiance, which is one of those words for devotion, proclaiming our allegiance to his names. Other translations say that the proclaiming our allegiance part is the fruit of our lips, giving thanks to his name. The fruit of our lips, giving thanks to his name. Did you know a thankful heart will always show up on thankful lips? If you don't hear Thanksgiving coming out of your mouth, be sure it's not quite working in the heart. Produced inwardly, expressed outwardly. Not just empty words, but from the heart. From the heart. This is cool. In the Passions translation, Hebrews 13, 15 says this. So we no longer offer up a steady stream of blood sacrifices, but through Jesus, we will offer up to God a steady stream of praise sacrifices. Jesus paid it all for us. He doesn't have to be sacrificed over and over and over. Where were the sacrifices made? In the tabernacle. They, were, they weren't made on that inside place. They were made on the outside. That sacrifice of praise. We offer up a steady stream of praise sacrifices. These are the lambs that we offer from our lips that celebrate his name. Here's the cool thing about this part, a steady stream of praise, steady stream of praise, not let's start it up when we get here on Sunday morning and shut it down when we leave here on Sunday afternoon. This isn't just about this and what we do here, a huge part of it, huge part of it. But in your car, at your job, in your mornings, throughout your day, in your conversation, with your family. Are you thankful? Are you giving, us pray, giving him praise? Do you just find times when your hands go up and say, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. You know, we just had Silas like three weeks ago, but I was thinking back on all three of our boys, all their births, and they've all been a little bit different. Um, some have been longer. Titus was like, I think like 24 hour labor. Ezra was quicker and then Silas was like, boop. Literally Courtney woke me up at 421 in the morning and he was here at 505. I was like, good morning. Do you want, you want some coffee? Yeah. It's great, great to meet you. Should we, have you had breakfast? I don't know. But I was thinking about this about how the Lord dealt with me in each of their births. And, um, you know, with Titus, uh, it, was, it was miraculous and it was great and the power of God was with us and everything we could have dreamed of, you know. But we were in the OR, which if you've been in the OR, it's not like the most enjoyable atmosphere. It's like white and gray and blue suits. I had to wear a weird thing and I had long hair back then. I had to wear one of those nets on my hair and I was in there. It's not the atmosphere... It's not really the atmosphere you want to be in. It's not really that enjoyable. But you know what can change an atmosphere? Praise. You know what can shift the atmosphere of your home? What can shift the atmosphere of your marriage? What can shift the atmosphere of your relationships? What can shift the atmosphere? It's praise. Thanksgiving and praise. And I remember this with Titus. We actually have it on video because we had someone record that one. We didn't with the other ones like... We got it. But um, we're in the OR and, you know, Courtney's pushing and pushing and, and he's coming out of there. It's like a, it's like a, it reminds me of like when you go buy a chicken at the store. If that's, what a, that's what a newborn baby looks like to me. I don't know. Just is what it is. 
It's how my mind works. It's what it looks like. A whole chicken. A whole one. Strange. But that was literally like our first time. I was like, that, that's a chicken. <laughs> He's not. But I thought maybe it could be. <laughs> Oh man, you're awesome. But this is what the Lord dealt with me in that time is, you know, they got a the heart rate monitors going, his heart rate's dropping really low, doo, 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 doo. like it's too low and they're all talking, they're all losing it. And I just heard this so quiet on the inside. Jordan, just lift your hands. You don't have to watch. Just thank and praise me. So I'm in the OR with all the scrubs on. There's a ton of people. I don't know how many people are in there. All of our scrubs on. And I just lift up my hands. Oh, I thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for his heart rate coming up. Thank you, Lord. And next thing you know, I'm praying in the spirit. They're all like, what? I'm like, cold am I? And I, I'm giving thanks. We give thanks well and we pray in the spirit. I'm praying in the spirit. I'm thanking the Lord. I didn't even watch it. I didn't watch it. But then I was thinking about with that, back with Ezra. And you know what? I realized with Silas, because the Lord had me do it with Silas too. When Ezra came, um, we, were, we had a home birth with him. So we're in our room, which is much better than the OR. Um, but either way, you can change the atmosphere. Um, <laughs> so we're in our room and same thing. His heart rate dropped low and the midwives, I could see their faces like, oh, I don't know. Like, and I just heard this in my heart. Just ask me what to say. So I just searched my heart got the words from the inside, said it. A couple minutes later, his heart rate comes up. Doom, 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 doom. It's perfect. He comes out free and clear, no issues. But that, same thing, after that, the Lord's like, you don't have to watch. Just thank and praise me. I didn't remember all this till lately. Just thank, and I just have my hands up. And they've got some video of this too somewhere. We won't show you. Um, <laughs> we're not that close. No, we can <laughs> Just thank and praise him. So this time with Ezra, you know, he's coming out. And I just heard this thing. And then I remembered, Lord, you've told me this every time. Like, I kind of want to watch. But just like, you don't have to watch. Like, not like it would be wrong if I did. But it's like, just thank. I was just sitting there. Thank you, Lord. Praise you, Lord. Silas's heart rate came down. And they're like, we need his heart rate to come up. And Boom, Lord told me, I prayed over it, thanked the Lord for it. And I mean, like, while we're praying, I'm like, all right, let's go. But you don't have to see it all to shift the atmosphere. It starts on the inside. It starts on the inside. But I thought it was interesting how he was like, man, just thank and praise me. And then his presence just entered into the room with all three of those births, whether we're in the hospital or at home or wherever, the OR, somewhere that you want to be, somewhere you don't want to be. His presence can be ushered in wherever you are. Mm, thank you, Lord, through his prayer, the pathway of praise. Thank you, Lord. We're almost done here, but I want to talk to you about what will keep you from praise. What can keep you from praise. And there's some things that probably come to your mind, your heart and your mind. And I'll read some things that came to my heart and my mind were obviously unthankfulness, pride, your ego, maybe a condemnation, maybe self-centeredness, shallowness of heart, being dry, being offended, arrogant. Maybe you've got hatred in your heart envious, just all described as the hard heart where nothing can flow out of. But look at this in the word in Psalm 42, verse 11, or sorry, Psalm 42, verse Psalm 42, verse five, David's saying, why am I so discouraged? Why is my heart so sad? I will put my hope in God and I will praise him again. 
Psalm 42, verse 11. Why am I discouraged? Why is my heart so sad? I'll put my hope in God again. I'll praise him again, my Savior and my God. Chapter 43, the same thing. Verse 5. Why am I discouraged? Why is my heart so sad? I will put my hope in God again. I will praise him again, my Savior and my God. What can keep you from praise? Just discouraged, a sad heart, no hope. And I think the way you get there is because you stop praising. So if you're dealing with a down heart, a downwardness, a discouragement, a sadness, you don't feel like you have any hope, you need to start praising again. You need to start praising again. Lord, where are you? I just want to be in your presence, but I feel so sad. You need to praise. Lord, I just want to be where you are, and I know that you're inside me and that you're living, and, but I just don't feel you, and I don't know, and ah, I feel so down. So I'm up and I'm down. I'm all around. You need to praise again. You need to be thankful. We've got to be thankful. You'll never, ever, ever get to a deep place in his presence. He's merciful. Don't get me wrong. He will show up and be there. He's God. But if you're wanting to get there, you'll never get there without thankfulness and praise. You want to be in his presence? You want to be in his atmosphere? You want to be at his feet? You know what's so cool about being in his presence? Just think about being in someone else's presence. You know, sometimes we say presence and we think like mist in the air, which, yeah, for sure. But also just think about being in someone's presence. You're with them. You can talk to them. You can feel them. You can hear from them. It's what you get when you're in his presence. But the only way to get there the only way to enter into his presence is through a pathway of praise. A pathway of praise. We'll close with this, this this morning. This last thought about the heart in praise. A tender heart. A tender heart. Man, being tender, God's all about the heart. Being tender before him, flexible, moldable. When, when soil is tender, when the heart is tender, the soil of who you are, the word of God is so easily planted and takes root. Do you want the word of God to take root in your heart, to grow down deep, to sprout up and bear fruit? Gotta stay tender. It won't happen if you're not tender. And you can break up any hardness of heart with thanksgiving and praise. It's the same way I did in that story I told you about when I came out of California. I was so hard-hearted. I mean, three months. Like, I did love the Lord, but I didn't want to do life the way he wanted to do it. it got me hard-hearted. I want to do my, it was self, selfish. We're called to be selfless. I was being selfless. Selfish, Sel shellfish. <laughs> they have that in California. Man, it created a hard heart in me and the word was just, although it was coming here and there, just bouncing, just sitting in there. I just wanted to get into his presence again. I just want to be at his feet again. I want to hear his voice again. I want to do what he's called me to do again. Your will, your way, Lord. I'm done with me. Got to get tender. Man, stir your heart. Start breaking it up. Any place that's hard, break it up. Break it up with thanksgiving and praise. A tender heart can change the atmosphere and usher in 
the manifested presence of the living God. And we know that in his presence, there is fullness of joy. Why? Every need's met. What you need? He's there. He's present. What you need? You need healing? You're with the healer. You need some prospering? You're with the prosperer. You need love? God is love. You're with him. What do you need? Some people need it. Some people want it. They don't know how to get there. And it's, it's not a long, drawn out process. It's an immediate switch over in the heart. Boom, you're there. You don't got to praise for four hours. It's a shifting of the heart. It's all it is. A stance of the heart of thanksgiving, of praise. Thank you, Lord. I'm already crying, wanting to read this verse. Because I think it's such a, it's a chapter almost. I think it's such a great example of praise and thanksgiving that we see through King David. And there's been some things in the way that the Lord's dealt in my heart that we pray in our family, or we pray here at church, or we pray with the team or whatever it is. And I didn't exactly know all the reasons why I would say those things first. But just reading this and, and, and thinking on these things this week, I just see it so clear. You gotta, you gotta do that to get to where you're going. This is so good. Psalm 103. On the outside of this, we'll read 103, verse one through verse 13. But on the outside of this page, I just have written, thank you. Thank you. Let me read this. If you don't know where to start, you can start here reading this because the same thing that God did for David, he's done for you. And if you don't feel like you've seen it, you can. Psalm 103, verse one, don't cry. Let all that I am praise the Lord. With my whole heart, I will praise his holy name. May I never forget the good things that he does for me. He forgives all my sins. He heals all my disease. He redeems me from death and crowns me with love and tender mercy. He fills my life with good things. My youth is renewed like the eagles. The Lord gives righteousness and justice to all who are treated unfairly. He revealed his character to Moses and his deeds to the people of Israel. The Lord is compassionate, compassionate and he's merciful. He's slow to get angry and he's filled with unfailing love. He will not constantly accuse us. Woo. He's so good. He's so good, guys. Man. Okay, finish. Okay. He doesn't punish us for all of our sins. He doesn't deal with us harshly. Woo. As we deserve. Man. Without him, what would it be like? What would we have to pay for? But Jesus, thank you. Oh, thank you and praise you. For his unfailing love towards those who fear him is as great as the height of the heavens above the earth. He has removed our sins as far from the east as from the west. The Lord is like a father to his children. He's tender and compassionate to all who fear him. You can't tell me you don't have anything to be thankful for. Read it again. If you're thinking you don't have anything to be thankful for, then you're not looking to him, you're looking to yourself. Can we stand together this morning?
Oh, thank you, Lord. Isn't he good? Isn't he faithful? Can we lift our hands in this house? Give him the praise that he's worthy of. Oh, from a tender heart, a pure heart. Oh, thank you, Lord. If you've been hard hearted, you don't have to, you can shift right now. You can get tender right now. Oh, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Oh, we praise you. We love you. We worship you. Thank you for your unfailing love. Thank you for your mercy. Thank you for your compassion. Has anybody ever experienced the mercy of God? Has anybody experienced the love of God? Oh, thank you, Lord. We have so much to be thankful for. So much to be thankful for. Let's just keep praising him for a second. Praise you and thank you, Lord. Praise you and thank you, Lord. Oh, we love you and we glorify you. Oh, we give you praise. We give you glory. Oh, we praise you. We praise you. We praise you. We praise you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Do you want more of his presence in your life? I know he's in you. He's there. He's present. But you don't want, do you want that manifested presence working in your life, working in your family, working in your marriage, working in your job, working with your relationships, working while you're at school? Because you're carrying it. Become a person of thanksgiving and praise and watch his presence manifest more in your life. Thank you, Lord. Isn't he good to us? We praise you today. We praise you today. We praise you today. Thank you, Lord. Does anyone in here not know Jesus? Does anyone in this room not know Jesus, has never made Jesus the Lord, the Savior of their life? Could you just raise your hand if that's you this morning? Anybody? Thank you, Lord. Well, if there is somebody, you can come up here at the front at the end of service. We'll have our altar ministers up here to pray with you. Or if you need anything else this morning, come down here. Don't leave before you've received. Just come get some prayer. Come have someone agree with you. Come get in a place of faith. Come get tender again. Let somebody come into agreement with you and watch the Lord work in your life. Amen. Man, we're, such a good Sunday. Thank you, Lord. I'm stirred up. Are you stirred up? Are you stirred up? One more verse. This is so cool. You know, in, um, in two or two weeks, we're recording. Is that right? Everybody heard the announcement about Legacy Praise and our live recording Sundays, right? Is it two, three weeks? Two weeks. Two Sundays starting in two weeks. Two weeks. Just studying this week, I, I read the scripture. I just want to read it to you. Because you got to get stirred up. You know, praise isn't about you. You might benefit from it because you'll get into his presence, obviously. But it's not just about you being seen, you making a noise for the sake of yourself. But how cool is it that the Lord would put on Sarah's heart legacy praise? Legacy praise. Praise that leaves a legacy. Listen to this, Psalm 102, verse 18. Let this be recorded for future generations so that people not yet born will praise the Lord. People not yet born as in babies, people not yet born again. That's the point of legacy praise. That's the point of the recordings. Not so that we can look cool. Big whoop. That doesn't do anything for anybody. Zilch. Zero. <clears throat> Nothing. Let it be recorded for future generations so that people not yet born will praise the Lord. Come on. 
So get stirred up this week, next week. I would encourage everyone, what if we can enter in together on a Sunday morning before the recordings? Don't just show up because we're recording. Show up because you love God. Because you want to give Him the praise He's worthy of. Because you want to thank Him. If you come in late, it's fine. I'm, there's no judgment. But come built up, stirred up, ready, ready to praise. Can we start it now? Yes. Next Sunday? Yes. Going into the next Sunday? Man, if we get in that flow, I'm telling you, the Word of God is true. And the Word of God works. We will see a surge of His power in His presence. But to get there, we got to praise. Amen. Amen. Man, I believe that you guys are going to have the best Sunday today. The best rest of the week. That His favor's on you. That the Lord's thinking about you. That He loves you. That His provision is for you. That He's strengthening your bodies. Healing you from the inside out. Strengthening your soul. Oh, thank you, Lord. We can just lift our hands and receive. Who can take some strength? We're about to end church, but the week's just getting started. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. And we believe at, the, at church that you will always be in the right place, at the right time, doing the right thing with the right people. Have the best Sunday. Have the best week. We love you guys so much. Have a great one. Thank you so much for tuning in today. We hope you enjoyed this message. If you need someone to pray with you, there are several ways for you to contact us. Feel free to give us a call at 817-577-0180. You can also contact us through the Legacy Studios app or either of our websites. Giving options are available online at pearsonsministries.com and legacychurch.family. If you prefer, you can also text an offering. Simply text LEGACY in any dollar amount to the number 28950 and follow the prompts. Be blessed today. We love you. And remember, you are always welcome here in the House of Faith.